אלעד סונגו שלום. שלום. And welcome to Culture Buzz. Welcome to Tel Aviv. Thank you. אלעד, you are the head of MTV Israel, and we are very interested in what MTV Israel is doing, has been doing for quite a few years now, and what is the influence MTV Israel is having on Israeli culture, on Israeli music. I was afraid you were going to ask what's, what's our effect on the, on the world of culture in this, the world. This, because this is the next, this is like the next question. We like to see ourselves as, the, as the, 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 the end of the world, the, the hole in which from everyone picks in to see the, the center of see the life. world. Yes. The center of the world. The energetic center of the world, as Madonna said. Well, anyway, I've been working for MTV. This has been my fifth year in the organization. Uh, it took us nearly three years to just uh, find out uh, how exactly this operation is going to work in Israel as in the rest of the world uh, MTV lives the MTV channels they live uh, off uh, uh, commercials and uh, due to uh, strict uh, regulations here in Israel in the TV market we are not allowed to uh, wear commercials on our oh. niche channels we call them, hey, we call it's, them. it's almost unfair it's uh, almost unfair to the commercial companies it's uh, more fair to the viewer okay. who already pays for uh, cable TV or satellite ah, TV it's subscription you have to subscribe to it uh, no actually um, your cable TV they subscribe you to it and they give it away for free uh, we are on the basic package on both Uh, hot and yes, okay. the cable, okay. cable TV and satellite TV here. So it's the cable uh, stations that pay you, the cable companies? They, uh, they are the ones to, uh, to fund us for their viewers. So basically you get it for free, okay. but they pay good money for it. Okay. So uh, we have developed a very economical uh, structure of the channel here, a uh, very small team. who is doing uh, everything um, and I think uh, this is actually very Israeli to do something very big in, uh, and put a very small operation behind it um, so that's how we do it we keep it very economical this way and I think uh, you know the heads of uh, Viacom uh, they referred uh, they referred to us as the most economical uh, team on Viacom worldwide. What a compliment! It is a compliment, yes. Um, it is a very good compliment and we work very hard for it. We have a very dedicated team for it. And, um, uh, so we're actually kind of new, only uh, one year and a half. Um, a part of our being uh, uh, super economical is having a uh, Uh, zero for a content budget which means uh, for every uh, for every content we would we need we want to produce we need to have a collaborator a partner yes a commercial company or uh, or a governmental uh, organization um, and this way we find uh, uh, um, the way to uh, to produce content to together uh, in which uh, they pay for it and we air it of course here we need to be very careful as well we can't have this content looking like a commercial because we're not allowed to do that so we need to be very smart and very pro uh, our viewers and then uh, we actually meet the, the commercial uh, collaborator like a uh, In the, in the area of the, you can call it like um, ideologic uh, DNA of the project, which means we don't just like, a, we don't use product placements, uh, but we use um, a similar ideas and ideas, uh, and then we, uh, you, we produce uh, and uh, program the content around these ideas and ideas. Okay. When it comes to your uh, uh, 
the content of MTV. What is the ratio? Israeli music and international music? Well, first of all, I have to say that uh, most of the content on MTVs worldwide is uh, less and less music videos and more and more uh, TV shows ah. such as reality shows, game shows, dramas and lots of uh, comedies as well. Okay. So, um, uh, and still we, we keep it very musical and uh, there's like a... Um, Trend. Yeah, there, we have like a, an opposite trend to whatever is going on in the other uh, MTVs around the world where we actually uh, get quite successful with our music hours. And this after so many years where they have said that uh, ever since YouTube, the place for music videos is over the internet. But I believe that more and more people are into, I mean, the, 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 the more choice you have, the more you need editors to help you sort everything out I see. and organize your life. Um, so this is good news for music lovers? It's good news for music <laughs> Good news for MTV people. But Elad, is it possible for you to estimate yeah. uh, how, how much Israeli music you play compared to how much music from all over the world? Uh, well, we stretch our boundaries of uh, Israeli music uh, all over the channel from 5 to 10 percent. And this is actually a limitation that uh, it's not us who set it up, but, uh, but the government, uh, because uh, they have uh, an idea of, uh, uh, of having a channel 24 as the home of Israeli music. I don't, I, I understand it, but not fully, because I think uh, our interest should be play as much Israeli music as you can and uh, compare Israeli music to international music. I see. Um, I know from uh, good friends and colleagues of mine or over on MTV France or Italy or Spain that they keep the ratio of almost 50% local music versus international okay uh, but we are not ready for it yet not even yet. even if we wanted so okay. five to ten percent uh, of all music is uh, is good for us right now okay because but it might change I hope it would because uh, and we actually um, we, we, we take all kinds of actions in order to help it happen sooner than uh, sooner than later uh, at the moment there aren't enough uh, Israeli artists and bands that produce music videos to their songs and when they do they don't have the right uh, let's say industry to support it and uh, help them create relatively cheap music videos who look uh, uh, who look really good and uh, we can work with uh, over the international platform this isn't the situation right now, I mean, like the moment Channel 24 have practically, uh, I don't want to say stop playing music videos of artists outside the Middle Eastern niche, but uh, they have reduced it to a very minimal level. And ever since that happened, many uh, indie artists here uh, felt like they have nothing to do this for. Uh, and uh, nothing to produce music videos for. Uh, this is also a mistake, of course, because uh, there is like this small uh, enterprise over the internet called uh, YouTube. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Yeah. It's a really important a little, tool. A little. A very good promotional tool for bands and artists to promote themselves and so show what they, what they want to do and actually gain nice crowds from there, you know, not, not just people who listen to the radio and... So your biggest competition is not Channel 24, it's YouTube? Actually it is, yes. Um, there isn't such a competition between us and Channel 24. I actually very... Uh, I'm, I'm actually really into what they're doing. I mean, not from a personal point of view. Uh, me personally, I don't really watch it, but... I uh, completely understand the commercial, uh, uh, the, 
the commercial need in such channel and um, I completely understand the, their choice of uh, content and uh, as an MTV person I couldn't be happier about it because it, it leaves us with so much things to do so Elad, uh, our viewers watching this interview yeah. might know uh, might not know this but I do I know that you are a true music lover That's or true. what we fondly call a music animal <laughs> yeah. and you are going all over the world uh, building yeah. networks and cooperation also with other MTV yeah. channels can you tell us a bit about this uh, aspect of your work or your life yeah this is actually something when I start when I started doing this I got all kinds of uh, lifted eyebrows from all kinds of people around the, uh, uh, the organization uh, because MTV they are used to working like a corporate and all of a sudden when I try to reach out to a single channel uh, of MTV France they found it very peculiar um, but for me it's very logical because Israel is a very small market in order for our uh, indie artists to be able to uh, first of all support themselves and second of all secondly to uh, to have any kind of influence uh, with their music around the world they need they need our help and I don't need to open up the, 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 the whole world for them as a, as a, as a music market uh, it's enough. Uh, for one band to be successful in one place outside of Israel, uh, just, as, just as a start. And uh, the first collaboration we did was with MTV France. Um, we swapped artists and combined music videos uh, of Israeli slash French artists in the other uh, in the other MTV. So basically, you, while you were showing French music, they were showing Israeli music. Yes. This is fantastic. When was fantastic. that? Fantastic. But of course, for me it was easier because French artists are, are worldwide uh, superstars. And um, our artists... We also have a few. No, not yet. Not Balkan Beatbox? But when you compare Balkan beatbox to that, to the French Daft Punk or Justice, it's not a very uh, fair comparison. We still have a way to go. Yes, 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 definitely a long way to go. And uh, and actually, this collaboration with France have uh, helped us open up new doors uh, to other cultures, MTV Spain, MTV Germany. When was it? Uh, three years ago. We actually did this collaboration with MTV France before we had a channel. Ah! Yeah, we had only an online uh, okay. service. Uh, okay. But, um, and the French Institute were very helpful. Yes. And they have um, sponsored a music video to, uh, to Asaf Amdouski, a very uh, famous, successful, and my personal favorite Israeli uh, rock star, and um, we have uh, second generation of singers. Yes, 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 yes. The son of Benny Amdouski, which which I'm also a fan of. May you rest in peace. May you rest in peace. Yes, in peace. And um, they they have sponsored the music video to Asaf Amdouski to one of his old songs, which we have translated to French wow. with the help of uh, Israeli translator and yeah. poet Dori Manor. I think I've seen it on YouTube. Yes, you probably, you, you probably have. And, uh, and radio stations here, they started playing this song because everybody knows this song in Hebrew and, and suddenly having it on French. So he did a really good service to the French Institute as well as us. Fantastic. Um, I think it's a brilliant idea and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, again, knowing you, and your attitude towards such cooperation, I think uh, an open call can come from this interview to the rest of the world. Yeah. Let's do the same. Yeah, yeah. Am yeah, I yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely. From here to the rest of the world, if if you are interested in doing something, 
with the Israeli artists. Call El Ad. Just call me. We have all the solutions <laughs> we need. We're very comfortable to work with. Uh, we answer emails right away. Wonderful. We understand all kinds of uh, technical formats. And uh, basically, we're all over the place. El Ad, uh, if I'm not wrong, you are a kibbutznik. It used to be, yes. There is no such a thing as used to be, because once a kibbutznik, always a kibbutz. Yeah, well, Even if you left the kibbutz. No, it's true. But uh, you should tell that to people who work with me, who think I'm uh, the symbol of uh, urbanism. Really? Of, yeah, because uh, I definitely grew up in a kibbutz, and I was... Uh, I, th I, I thought, I hoped uh, to, be, uh, to be in ag agriculture when I grew up. A farmer. Yeah, I wanted to be a farmer. I wanted to have... Uh, like uh, big uh, farms and uh, I don't know trees of all kinds, fruit, and uh, but uh, and look at you today. And look at me now. <laughs> my, my my life took a complete. Uh, I'm I'm afraid to ask what do what do the parents say or the uh, family? My, it took my parents my my family a while to understand where I'm going, and uh, I don't think they completely understand now because I don't completely understand. And if you ask me what do I want to do when I uh, grow up, I don't know. It's <laughs> probably more more of that, more of that, whatever nice. it is. But uh, yeah, Elad, I would like to take this opportunity. Uh, I know that you have lots of understanding and knowledge mm -hmm. when it comes to the Israeli music scene. Yes. Will you be kind enough to try and describe? the Israeli music scene as it is, but also compares to what's happening in other musical centers in the world. Yes, of course. Uh, well, first of all, you need to, uh, to distinguish the underground scene, the alternative scene from the mainstream scene. Okay, this is mainstream compared with indie? Or indie, yeah, is, all, that's, that's or indie is already part of the mainstream? Uh, there isn't... Well, it's complicated here in Israel, and I will tell you why. Because the mainstream We here, are a complicated country, we are a complicated uh, people. It's, it is, this is so true, and uh, it's beyond true. But uh, the thing is, the mainstream here in this, in this period of uh, this few last years, and I don't think it's going to change very soon, but uh, the mainstream in Israel is very uh, Middle Eastern, what we call Mizrahi, Amtichoni. Oriental. Very oriental, yes. That's what they call in other places in the world. I know that uh, um, colleagues of mine, like in uh, MTV Adria, they call, they they have the same kind of a mainstream uh, scene, and they call it turbo folk. Really? Turbo folk. Wow. Yeah, turbo folk. And this is a really nice thing that I I, I, I told them like a year ago. Not I'm going bad, to adopt it. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. So this is that's the mainstream. Okay. I, um, um, funny enough, it's uh, this whole scene is like a, is a, is a very uh, independent scene, meaning that these famous artists and each one of them is like a superstar. They're all millionaires. Can you mention a few names? Yeah, Sarit Chadad, Eyal Golan, Shlomi Shabbat, Moshe Peretz. This you call mainstream. These are the mainstream. So artists I will be Israel. wrong. Calling Shlomo Arzi mainstream? Uh, not call, you know what? Shlomo Arzi is a very mainstream artist, but he's an, the old mainstream. Okay. The mainstream have changed okay. in the past few years of Israel. And uh, it, while it used to be very a uh, rock, folk, country kind of thing. Now it's oriental. It's more oriental. And uh, while this uh, Shlomo Arzi scene, uh, I can compare it to the uh, US uh, maybe folk, garage, rock and roll scene. Uh, this current Yam uh, Yam Tichonit Mizrahi Oriental scene is more of uh, maybe the R and B, hip hop, the black side of the uh, okay. of the of the neighborhood map. Okay. Um, so basically, the the mainstream scene here is all about that. And as Israel is a very small country. Uh, with a very young culture, in terms of culture, we are babies. 60 years of culture, 60 years of music is nothing, really. Unless you add to the 
to 3,000 years. Yeah, but then we have a gap of 2,000 years, in, which is very hard uh, uh, to consum compensate because, uh, I mean, like you need to listen to a hip hop in Hebrew and, or, a, or a rock song. A Dag Nakash. Like, yeah, we are lacking so many words and so many um, ways to pronounce the words. Uh, not enough slang, not enough usage. So it's really difficult. It's 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 uh, it's really hard to create music on, from only like six years of uh, experience. And the other side of the coin will be that it's very fresh. It's very original. It's like kicking like a baby like baby steps so it has its uh, charm well it has its, its charm but charm isn't enough and when it comes to the international musical scene yes you need uh, not only that I, I think um, um, music in Israel uh, only lately only in the past few years have become a legit industry being a musician is Barely uh, a legit occupation, uh, a, 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 a legit mikzor uh, profession. Profession for, unless, for for the Jewish mother for her son. Unless you are a classical musician. Unless you are a classical musician, but and then as well, it's not it's not so uh, uh, determined because I don't think that for a Moroccan mother, being a musician, a, music, a, a classical musician is a good profession for life uh, while doctor and lawyer are or an engineer okay so this was very eloquent of you describing the present and the past when you look ahead what of do you the see mainstream of the mainstream yes when i look ahead what do you see i see the vivid indie underground scene here which is super creative and innovative uh, but lacks the means uh, to evolve and uh, and and have a true uh, say uh, at this point. and influence at this point. in the world of music. Let's mention a few point. words, a few, a few names, um, examples. Well, the TYP, uh, the new uh, the new band of Ivry Leader and Johnny Goldstein are right now at the top of the game, and they, they have a big. Uh, um, um, big uh, deal with a nice record company uh, over in France where it's going to become an international right. Asafa Vidan uh, Balkan Beatbox Infected Mushroom um, and, uh, and so these are relatively um, they are not the youngest um, um, bands and brands uh, in, the, in the scene there are newer artists, newer bands, but these are the these are the artists that are most known outside of Israel and they have the most of the activity um, around the world in festivals, record companies, whatever. Maybe we should mention Yemen Blues also? Yemen Blues, I mean, this isn't a part of, a real part of the indie scene. They, are, they belong to the, to the scene of, uh, the beautiful scene of world music and they are getting more and more successful there. We have them, we have uh, uh, Idan Reichel and his project. Right, and uh, you have another uh, Yemenite uh, band uh, that is uh, starting to go uh, abroad on different festivals. Yemen, not Yemen Blues, forgot the name. <laughs> but I can add a list to this interview of all kinds of Israeli artists that they have this uh, international... Okay. Uh, okay, we can do it. Okay, have please. a playlist of... Uh, we have a deal. Alright. Um, so, there the, the are many, many small scenes that uh, combine the Tel Aviv uh, music scene. And um, I think that our biggest accomplishments are yet to come. And I think that the, uh, our biggest... and. Uh, I think the biggest talents uh, yet to, to, on, on the international field they are, now are yet in, to be discovered. They are now either in the kindergarten or in school. Yeah, I hope they are now learning uh, to play the guitar or, uh, or uh, different instruments. So you are optimistic? Um, I have to be. I have to be because, uh, you know, 
Uh, here, if you're not optimistic, you are uh, pessimistic. You're, you're headed uh, down <laughs> because if you if you're pessimistic, you find you find <laughs> you find the reasons for it in your everyday life, and you have all the legitimation to be uh, to be pessimistic. Right. But no, I'm definitely optimistic, and I really believe in uh, our talent, in our innovation, and I really believe in this. Uh, culture and it's and, it, and it's need to renew itself and to uh, right. to learn and grow and uh, and teach others as well and you know a lot I must confess listening to you I have a strong feeling that MTV Israel yeah under your leadership will be part of this process I hope so I'm doing everything in everything I can to be a part of it and uh, Although it's not a part of my job description, description to promote Israeli artists, especially not outside of Israel. This is a hobby. I, it's not. I, I, on my first day uh, after the launch of MTV, I've written down a list of, uh, of uh, dues of, for the, the people who would follow me in the channel. And one of them is promote Israeli music and Israeli artists outside of Israel using the international platform of MTV. For us, it's a basic need, so... Elad Sonego, MTV Israel, this was indeed music for our ears. Thank you. <laughs>